you are a little curious about the red stole on the table, it was your gift to me. Um, Wellington below them gifted me that when I was ordained, and Jeanette made it. It's my pleasure this morning, not that she needs my introduction, to present to you Susan Hammer, who has recently been ordained in interfaith ministry, has made this her community now. And for the first time, we're leaders in the liturgy today. So, Susan. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. We stand in the presence of the Blessed Spirit. We stand in silence and awe. We listen and respond in whatever way we are able, seeking the way towards truth and kindness, seeking to be closer to God. The Lord be with you. Kia noho ahihua akia koto. With you also. Kia kwe anahoki. Light this candle to remind us of the light of God's love and the warmth of God's welcome to everyone. So we say to each other, Welcome to this place. Welcome to worship. Welcome in the name of the living God. Amen. Hello, everybody. I'm very, very happy to be here with you today, and I hope to be with you again every Sunday. As, lo- as often as I can. Um, we do have a few level two requirements for those who are joining us for the first time for a level two service. Um, looks like everybody has done social distancing beautifully, so I don't have to remind anybody about that. Um, we do have a slightly different procedure for the portion of the service that is normally a singing exercise. Um, rather than trying to sing into masks, which is can be difficult, um, we are, a column will play the tune for the hymns, and then we will recite them rather than trying to sing them in a muffled way. Um, we should try to avoid any physical contact with anybody outside our bubbles, so that means we won't join together and hold hands at the end of the service. Um, we won't have any refreshments afterwards, unfortunately, but within those restrictions, um, we're still together, we're still a church family, and we can support each other in every other way that we can. Is there, are there any other announcements or bits of news that anybody would like to offer now? All right, we'll continue then. Um, Helen is going to do a reading, poem by Mary Oliver called Wild Geese. Uh, Mary Oliver is a, was an American poet, um, highly um, accoladed for her work, uh, including a Pulitzer Prize. Um, she was a big believer in the natural power of nature for healing and I think you'll hear a little bit of that in this poem. Thank you, Helen. Wild geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, 
the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Let us pray. We come to you, blessed spirit, with minds that long for quiet, ready, ready to hear, to your, hear words your words in the, in the silence, silence of, of our, our hearts. hearts. We want to draw close to you, to feel your loving presence in our lives, and, and carry, carry that, that presence, presence throughout, throughout our, our days and, and nights. nights. We want to draw close to the warmth of your steady light and, and use it to nourish those around us, to bring, to bring them comfort as you comfort us. Keep us close. Keep, Keep us always near so that we are able to hear the whisper of grace in our lives. Amen. So our first hymn uh, the words are in your bulletin. It's a contemporary Maori praise song from New Zealand Praise, and Colin will play the tune for us first. Ete te ariki, he atua koe, te rangi mari e he nga wari, ti aho mai, te fetu marama. Ete ariki, he atua koe, e te matua, ta maiti ra, waiua tapu, oranga nui. Ti aho mai, te fetu marama, e te ariki, e a tākue. Our next reading, also delivered by Helen, is a poem called Wage Peace by Judith Hill. I've adapted it slightly. Judith is an American poet and cookbook author. She lives in the mountains of northern Colorado. Wage peace. Wage peace with your breath. Breathe in firemen and rubble. Breathe out whole buildings and flocks of birds. Breathe in terrorists. And breathe out sleeping children and freshly mown fields. Breathe, breathe in, in confusion. confusion and breathe out trees. Breathe in the fallen and breathe out lifelong friendships intact. Wage peace with, with your listening. listening. Hearing Hear sirens, pray, pray loud. loud. Remember your tools, flower seeds, clothes pins, clean rivers. Make soup, soup. Play, play music, music. memorize the, the words for thank you in three languages. languages. Learn to knit and make a hat. Think of chaos 
as dancing raspberries. Imagine grief as the outbreath of beauty or the gesture of fish. Swim for the other side. Wage peace. Never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Thank you, Helen. And now to honor this week, which is Tewiki O Torio Mari 2021, Hilda Houston has very sweetly agreed to tell us a story. Thank you, Hilda. Um, I've chosen to use this puka puka no here to why. Where is water from? Because when we introduce ourselves in Te Reo Māori, we, we, um, the question that you're answering is, no he kwe, where are you from? Well, no wai he aho. But when you introduce yourself, it's also the landmarks that are important. The mountain, the river, who call you home and by whose presence you know you've come home. So... No here te awa, where does the river come from? We'll see. No here te wai. No here te wai. No nga roi mata, a rangi nui. Ka maringi iho, ka tau ki te tinana o papatua nuku. Ka tere ki ngā manga, me ngā wai kere. So the rain flows, falls down on the body of Mother Earth and flows into the streams and the rivers. V. Ki ngā roto. Me ngā awa o te iwi, into the lakes and the big rivers of the people. Ki te moana, te nohonga o tangarua, ka ara ake ngā wai nei, hei kohu. And then into the sea, the place of tangarua, and then rise up as water, oh, from the water, as mist. Ka huri hai kapua. Ka miria e te ha mahana a tāwhiri mātea. Then it turns into clouds and is caressed by the warm winds of tāwhiri mātea. Ka tangi anō a rangi nui. Ka maringi iho ona roi mata. And so Ranginui cries again and his tears fall. Ka tino hari koa ngā mokopuna. And the children are very happy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hilda. That was. Beautiful. Um, we're going to recite and listen to the music for another hymn, uh, Faith Forever Singing, number 62.
The Lord God walked in paradise at the end of an Eden day. What have you done with all you know? And why did you hide away? And still in the cool of the evening there, God stands beside the tree, calls to each hidden, shrinking soul, come back to me, come back to me. Reject a world of bricks and straw, from yoke and chain break free, and risk the wilderness to claim my spirit's liberty. And still the burning bush flames out to call us from our rest, to free the captive and the slave, to stand with the oppressed. Fling wide your nets yet one more time to find another shoal, and draw them gently to the shore, each gleaming, leaping soul. And still Christ meets the fisher folk beside the glittering sea, and calls to every silver soul, come in God's grace to me. As water in the waterfall, as a blossom on the tree, so each within each other's life to all eternity. And still Christ calls us to restore that harmony of things, and faith kept true, all hope made good, all love unbounded sings. We'll now have a couple of readings from the scripture. Hey, John. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Psalms. Psalm number one, a wisdom psalm about the two ways. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They're like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its seasons, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And the Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, verse 30. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. Taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes 
Not me, but the one who sent me. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to begin with a small passage from the third chapter of Genesis. Now they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. We all know this story pretty well about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God creates everything, puts them in there, and then they mess up pretty badly. The story is ostensibly about temptation and the fall of humankind. But I want to shine a light on something different today. There is one thing in this passage that is a bit confusing. How is it that the omniscient God, the creator of heaven and earth, the populator of the garden, does not have the power to find Adam? Surely God, the God, could locate him easily enough. But God doesn't look for Adam. He doesn't make a beeline for his hiding place, crying, gotcha. Instead, the creator asks the very first biblical question. Where are you? Now, the word in Hebrew for where are you is ayeka. So now, we can imagine God, in the cool of the day, wandering through the garden, calling Ayeka, like in a game of hide and seek. God knows where Adam is, and yet still Ayeka rings out among the trees. Why would God do this? I believe it's because God is asking Adam to step out of hiding and own up to the mess that he's made. Where are you becomes not just a simple question of physical location, but a sharper question. Where are you in your relationship with me? Or even, where is your heart, Adam? That is the true meaning of ayeka, where are you? This word, this ageless question, is still just as relevant today. As people of higher spiritual purpose, we must ask ourselves, Ayeka, am I on the path that leads me towards kindness and social responsibility? Or have I strayed into a web of distractions? And it is not a question that we can ask ourselves once and be done or not even just on Sundays. It needs to be asked every single day. And the answer to that question, to answer that question, we need another Hebrew word. Hineni, I am here. That is what Moses answers when God calls to him from the burning bush in Exodus 3. He doesn't run away although he must surely have been scared witless. God says, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, Hineni, I am here. He has heard God's call, and instead of hiding, he waits, ready to listen. He is fully present before God. Again, this story is not meant to be taken literally, but illustrates that God, in calling Moses to become the liberator of the oppressed Hebrew people, has taken his measure in the answer that Moses gives. Hineni, 
I am here. Moses is ready to listen, to help, to do what God needs of him. So when we ask ourselves, Ayeka, can we answer, Hineni? Are we truly present before God and before each other? Sometimes, most of the time even, I know that I'm not. When I am in conversation with a friend or family member, I am often thinking about the next thing that I want to say, or something that the conversation has reminded me of, or even, gee, this is nice, but I really need to get a move on or I'll be late. Sometimes, I even keep one eye on, or even both eyes on my phone while I am listening. Is that being present? No, not even close. And I have little doubt that those contacts with others, it is quite obvious that I am not fully present, despite my efforts to hide it. It just shows. In our busy lives of multitasking, jobs, and responsibilities, I think it's fair to say that many of us are rarely fully present to each other. Caught up in busyness, material accomplishments, and the acquisition of things. But how important it is to really, truly listen. I'm sure we can all think back to a time when talking to a trusted friend or counselor that we really felt heard. To be the center of someone's attention is to feel loved in a very special way. We owe the world that attention, to be present to the cries, to learn what needs to be done, and then to step up and say, Hineni, I am here. In our gospel reading this morning, we find Jesus questioning the disciples. He doesn't ask Ayeka, yet the substance of his query is much the same. What were you discussing on the way? Jesus is a keen judge of people. He sees the disciples walking and talking. Perhaps he notices a clenched fist, a shrug of the shoulder, or an angry glance passed between them. He knows that the disciples have been talking about something upsetting. So he asks, in effect, where are you? And in shame, they don't reply because they were talking about which one of them was the greatest. But Jesus already knows the answer anyway. One gets the impression that this might be a frequent topic of conversation among the disciples. Jesus sets them straight by saying, if anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Now they know exactly where they are at the end of the line. And if God should call Ayeka very, very quietly from inside our hearts, would we hear it? Could we hear it in our noisy daily lives? And if we do, will we reply, Hineni? Or will we run and hide, ashamed of ourselves and what we have done? Or be fearful that God will ask too much of us? One thing is certain. To hear God requires us to be fully present, to stand on holy ground, to make the time and stillness to listen. As a member of the Society of Friends, their form of worship requires just this. I join in a circle with others. There is no music or liturgy. We sit mostly in silence and focus on the space that lies within where spirit can be found. Everyone does the same thing. After an hour or so, it ends without any fanfare or special prayers. Sometimes the meeting is just a peaceful time of silence. 
but other times it becomes more than this. A powerful force can be unlocked when people pray and meditate together. Friends may stand and speak a message, and sometimes their conviction is so strong that they will sway back and forth, almost in a trance. This is how the Society of Friends became known as the Quakers. What started as no doubt an insult has become the very essence of what it means to be a friend, standing in the presence of God, listening. I can tell you that though this form of worship sounds quite relaxing, it's often very difficult to stay presence, present to the silence of God for 60 minutes. I rarely manage it, but when I do, it is a transformative experience. How to be present, how to really listen comes down to knowing where we are. When God says, Ayeka, will we reply, Hineni? A Jewish cantor came to visit my seminary in the first year, and she taught us a wonderful chant based on these two words. And I want to teach it to you now. Um, Although I did say that we wouldn't be singing, I'm going to make a little distinction between singing and chanting. Um, not exactly the same thing, so we'll give it a try anyway. It goes like this. Ayeka uh, hineni. So I'm going to say ayeka, and you're going to answer hineni. Let's try it. Ayeka. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to do that three times. Ayeka Ayeka And then the last line slightly different um, and we're all going to do that together but I'll chant it for you first so you know how it goes Hineni Here I am Okay, let's try that together Throw it one more time. Three times with Ayaka and Hineni, and then the last one. Ayaka. 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 So when I'm feeling scattered, when I don't know who I am and where I belong, I try coming back to myself with a chant like Ayeka and Hineni, or even just take a few deep breaths. It brings me back to the heart of all things, to the ground of my being, so that I too can wage peace with my breath so that I, too, can hear the wild geese calling, harsh and exciting. We miss so much by not being present to God and each other. I pray that when God calls Ayeka, we will always answer, Hineni. Amen. Somebody be so kind as to bring the offering up for me. These are the gifts we bring to the table. Blessed Spirit. Not only our material offerings, but also the gifts of our hearts, 
the gift of our fellowship, the gift of an outstretched hand, a loving smile, a warm hug. Gather all our gifts and use them to make our world a reflection of the love that you share with us all, known and unknown, seen and unseen. For we are all worthy of this love in your name. Amen. Next hymn is from Faith Forever Singing, number 37. The Lord God, sorry, wrong one, in the quiet of the day, in the safety of this place, holy presence, hear me pray, soothe my spirit with your peace. My thought, take the tension from my frame, free within me what is fraught, still waves I cannot tame. I am tired and out of tune. It is you who gives a new song. I am fearful and alone. Bring me home where I belong. What I am, you truly know. More than lover, more than friend. You, the light to which I grow. You, my meaning and my end. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray together. Spirit, we come to you with open hearts, with hands outstretched to receive your blessing. We remember those who are suffering throughout the world both physically as well as the anguish that stems from fear, loneliness, and disconnection as we continue to navigate this pandemic. Bring your peace to them, blessed spirit. We remember those suffering in war-torn places whose lives are bounded by fear and want. Bring your peace to them, blessed spirit. We remember those suffering in places that are feeling the effects of climate change, whose homes and very lives are in danger from the pervasive lack of determination and courage among the developed nations to do what is right for the world. Bring your peace to them, blessed spirit. Spirit of grace, we know that you will grant us peace. We know that you will give us the compassion and the will to help others. We remember now all those who need our prayers. Let us also offer a prayer to those who have no one to pray for them who feel cut off from the love of spirit and the rest of their family of humankind. You will remember them, blessed spirit. You will know their names and their suffering. Bring your peace to them, blessed spirit. Hold us all close to your heart. Amen. So this candle is now extinguished for a time. Silent light lives on in our hearts and will never be dimmed. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
This is a prayer of St. Augustine. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Do you want to stand and form a circle together, not touching, appropriately, physically distanced if we can, but not spiritually distanced, that's the main thing. Yatel, Yatatu, Pato, Te Atua, O Tutatu, Ari, O Io Cari, Te, Me Te Aroha, A Te Atua, Me Te Pilinga, Haitania, Te Wairua, Tapu, Ake, Ake, Ake. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Thank you.